Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail and I have several clips for you today. They're all fairly short, but I thought I'd put together just a bunch of short clips for you. And I think there's about 10 of them. They're all from Judge Boyd or Judge West in Texas. Um, just a few I'll talk about. There's a woman with five DWIs on her record and she's in court for another, allegedly. There's a sovereign citizen that shows up in Judge West's courtroom and tries to run it the way he chooses. <laughs> that doesn't go well. Um, there is a defendant in Judge Boyd's courtroom who shows up late, gets put in handcuffs and taken to the back, and throws a tantrum in the back, and Judge Boyd has to set him straight. And then there's also a guy who wants to fire his attorney the day of his jury trial. Something tells me he's just trying to postpone the inevitable. Anyway, roll the clips. Mr. Roa, come forward. morning good morning all right mr roa here's the thing yeah. you have two choices and both of them have custody attached to them you're either doing felony drug court or you're going inpatient but either way you're not leaving court today so which do you choose what do you mean man you have a drug problem you are either going to felony drug court or yes, you're either going to felony drug court or either you're going to inpatient treatment. So felony drug court is willing to accept you. Uh, so you can go to felony drug court or you can wait at the Bear County Jail and be transferred to safe P. Which do you prefer? I'll attend the drug court. All right, so you're gonna be taken into custody I'm going to let felony drug court know that you're in custody and that you're willing to be in the program. And I will see them an email and they'll probably be able to see you today or at the latest, probably next week, Monday. Do you understand? Sure. All right. All right, you're Nicholas Kopic. So, Mr. Kopic, I received an administrative hearing from probation and uh, asking that we have a judicial review today because of your performance or lack of performance on probation. When's the last time he was tested? Right, so we're, let's start with the test today to see if they're still positive. Have you done anything since then? No. Are you wearing a drug patch or anything like that that wasn't required? Well, that's going to happen for sure. Um, So it looks like, Mr. Coppin, that Ms. Jones asked you to do certain things, and you have said that you only have to do certain some things and not other things that she asked you to do. Okay, so did you submit to a mental health evaluation like she asked you to? So he, he lives in Warren, Texas. Mm -hmm. So request for courtesy supervision was submitted to mm -hmm. this county. Okay. And he did not report because he's in Oklahoma working without permission. So the officer there tried to explain to him the protocol and procedures for obtaining travel permission to look at a state. Right. And he did not follow through with that. So they rejected supervision. So we scheduled him for an administrative hearing. He reported on January 4th of this year. Okay, in. gotcha. And that's when all the other issues uh, were developed. When he told, he did tell us that 
there's only certain conditions that he has to comply with. Okay. I, I, I mean, she's right here. So what you said, you said, uh, I trust Miss Jones that she's not going to stand here and make something up about someone. Um, here, here's the thing about probation, Mr. Coppock. Uh, you're on probation for a third degree felony offense. That's very serious. You could go to prison for up to 10 years. Right now, really, all they have to do is file a motion to revoke probation because you've already violated and I can send you to prison for 10 years for a violation. You don't get to pick and choose what you think you need or don't need while you're on probation. You may not think you need certain things. If probation says they want something done, then my order is for you to do it, right? I don't want to have to stand here like you're a child every time and say, you have to do what she says. I told you already, you have to do what they say. You're not going to get any other warnings about that. What's happened because you haven't done that now is that the other county didn't accept a courtesy supervision. That's that just makes it harder on you. She was Miss Jamie Glosson was trying to make me quit my job. Judge, if I don't have a job, how am I going to pay my bill? Well, and here's the thing. No one wants you to quit a job, but you have to have permission we have to know where you are. We have to know what you're doing, what your job is, and you have to provide actual verification, not just I'm doing this and I have to go. So no one, I, I don't know this other probation officer, but I would be, it would surprise me a lot if she just wanted you to quit your job, right? Nobody wants you to quit. Everybody on pro, but these, the people that are probation officers are there not to put people in prison. They're there to help people get better so that they don't go to prison. Yes, I did not video it, but I I did hear Jamie Glosson say you cannot go to work. Well, she might have said you cannot go to Oklahoma. I, uh, and so here's the thing. You can't go to Oklahoma until, unless you have permission. So she probably did say that, but you have to get go through the proper channels. Ms. Jones is here now. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to order anything other than what she says she thinks you need, right? If that's an evaluation of some sort to see if there's something that can help you be successful, then you're going to do the evaluation and you're going to follow any treatment. If it's getting a job where you don't travel out of state, then you find a job where you don't travel out of state. It's just the, that simple. The company I work for is trying to make it to where I can work at the shop in Vienna. Good. And go from Warren to Vienna instead of on the travel. But you've got to still have permission to go wherever it is, right? Yes. Because now at this point, your probation's Jefferson County. Yes, so you're going to have to report here because you didn't do take care of what you want. Maybe they can resubmit it. I don't know. But for now, you're going to be working with Miss Jones. You're going to have to make those trips here. You're going to have to remain in the state unless you have permission and follow all of her rules. Um, because her rules are my rules. Do you understand? Miss Jones, is there anything? I want a drug patch for sure. So you're going to get a drug patch um, on uh, and those are something you have to change every two weeks. If that drug patch comes back positive and continues to come back positive with marijuana or anything else, yes, you're going to be back in here looking at going to prison. It's yes, just that simple. Yes, right? Anything else that you can think of, Ms. Jones? When I leave here, I will be doing GED. When you leave here, you're going to be doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And you're going to provide verification of it. So you can't just say I'm doing it, right? You print something out. You give her the verification. You email her. Whatever it is that she says, it's it, verification is as important as you doing it because you just saying it as much as we'd like to believe everyone, we have to have verification in writing of some sort that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. All right. Anything Thank else? You. Thank you. All right. Thank you. At this point, I don't know. Um, when's he coming to see you again? Yeah. Let's do one today. Let's see where it is. And that way kind of have some, it should be going down. So y'all can do the, the quantitative instead of just the positive. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's make sure it's going down. Okay. Thanks. Rojas, you have a Lupe Gamez, cause number 23 DCCR 0319. 
I don't think it's in that stack. Good morning. We've got him, I think. Yes. Okay, you're Lupe Gomez. Okay. What is your last name, Lupe? Okay. Well, um, this is a uh, state court, not federal court, and you can challenge. Here you go. Let's just listen. You can challenge whatever you want, but we're going to move forward with your case, with or without your cooperation. And so, jurisdiction. I'm sorry. The jurisdiction of this court. What about it? What jurisdiction is this court operating in? The Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. Um, the, yeah. So uh, what, I, I stop talking. Mr. Record, what jurisdiction is court is operating in? This is cause number 23 DCCR 0319. Mr. Gomez, don't speak over me. Proving that I am dead, I'm also ordering you to bring the bonds to see who's going to identify me. Are you saying you're dead? Is that what you just said? Are you going to bring the bonds board to see who's going to identify me? I'm going to take care of the court the way I take care of court. You're not in charge here. I am. And so, You're Mr. Agent. Well, I'm really. Judicial powers according to the, uh, okay. Um, so, Mr. Judge, Rojas. I, uh, Mr. Gomez indicated to me that he was not going to uh, accept a plea in this case. Sure. We, I signed up on the tablet. He refused to sign. He okay. wanted to have this up here in front of court. So, sure. we can. So, what is the off? Let's go through. It's um, the. Charge is evading arrest or detention with previous convictions from August 29th of 2022. The indictment alleges uh, that Mr. Gomez was previously convicted of evading arrest October 9th of 2002. And then after that was final, was convicted February 10th of 2009 with the offense of evading arrest. And after that was final, convicted April 15th of 2011 of evading arrest. And what that means is a state jail felony that the range of punishment is between six months and up to two years in a state jail prison uh, if convicted by a jury. And what is the offer that's been made? So one year state jail, Judge. And so, Mr. Gammas, the state has made an offer if you wanted to enter a plea of guilty for a one year term in the state jail prison. You have every right to refuse that and have a jury come in and determine whether or not you're guilty and what your punishment would be. And is that what you want? Do you want to have a jury trial? I will okay, what do you not understand? Uh, you have not disclosed the nature and the cause of the accusation. What? You have not disclosed the nature and the cause of the accusation. I just did. The nature and the cause of the accusation against you is that on August 29th of 2022, it's alleged that you intentionally fleed from Chad Morrison, a person. Don't talk over me. A person that you knew was a peace officer. That's the allegations against you. So if you either, if you say you did not do that on. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to. Okay. So we'll get a jury set up. And what we'll do is Mr. Rojas um, handles a lot of cases for me as a court appointed attorney. Uh, what I can do is release him and appoint another attorney today who can begin preparation for trial uh, a little quicker. Is that okay with you? Are you not going to answer that? I still understand okay. Well, we've explained them to you. And what I'll do also, uh, since you're saying you don't understand the proceedings, is I'm going to have Mr. Gomez uh, evaluated for competency to stand trial. If you'll get that order done, Mr. Gomez will have uh, someone come out to see you uh, to do an evaluation to see if you're competent and whether or not you understand the proceedings. Mr. Rojas, you are uh, released, and we will appoint another attorney today to begin preparation for trial, and we'll get a jury as quick as we can. You can go back with the bailiff. Your Honor, do you want to talk to Hernandez? Yes, let's bring him out. Hello. Hello, Miss. Hey, I heard you fell out in the back when they were taking you to custody, yes, throwing yourself on the floor. Well, here's the thing. Throwing yourself on the floor crying because you've been taken into custody. You know what that results in? Let me see if you're a little girl. No. I mean, uh, excuse me. Do not say bad things about little girls. That's saying something bad things about little girls because little girls don't do that. But 
You know what ends up happening when you go in the back and you throw yourself on the floor? You just on a dirty floor. That's true. And then you know what ends up happening? The deputy calls somebody and this deputy and the other deputy, they just will drag you out. Now, why were you late for court this morning? I'm, I'm, I'm actually on some medication right now that's supposed to help me for my anxiety and depression and other stuff. And I actually had my alarm set for 6.30 a.m. this morning so I could go ahead and shave this little bit off, take my shower, get some breakfast, and actually be here an hour early. All right, so let me give you a hint. This is what you have to do, and this is what I do. If you know. I have two phones with the alarm. Here's the thing. They didn't, they didn't work for you they, today. They didn't miss, and I woke up this morning mad. Man. So this is what you need to do. You need to set your alarm and set it in increments, because this is what I've discovered from some people. Some people, the alarm goes off, then they hit the snooze, and they continue to hit the snooze. I'm recalling this case for tomorrow, and guess what? You better be on time. You got this is 6.30, 6.32, 6.34, 6.36, Oh, here's the thing. That's how I have my alarm. Is. This is the thing. I'm not in charge of your alarm clock, but I'm going to recall the warrant, and you had better be in here tomorrow on time at 9 a.m. I'm going to be an hour early, man. Oh, well, if you're here an hour early, which means you'll be here at 8, I'll just sit on the eight. bench. I'll sit on the bench. And you know what? If you're sitting on that bench... When these doors open, you better be in here. I'm going to greet you in the morning, miss. Well, I mean, don't <laughs> greet me. The deputies will get concerned about that. But all right, uh, Norma, if you can give him a reset form for tomorrow at 9 a.m. All right. Thank you. Take off your custody. Oh, don't fall out on the floor back there. <laughs> all right, Tomas Hernandez. Good. Come forward. <laughs> All right, your attorney is not doing well. Uh, you look better than you did yesterday, but know, you man. but you were still not here at eight a.m. Oh, like you said you were. Eight thirty, my bad. No, not your bad. You said you were going to be here at eight. You I were came not. on a little bike, miss. No, there's no excuses. <laughs> Here's the thing, what I've learned in my time on the planet. When you make promises, you need to keep those. Yes, so unless you came from the hospital and some emergency popped up, you said you were going to be here at eight and you were not. Yes, All right. We're going to see you back on the 26th at nine. And Eddie, take care of yourself. Oh, good. Don't come back down here if you're not feeling well, okay? No, no. I have to get it up from um, one man show. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome. All right. Are you Jasmine Stevens? Yes. And will your client waive? What are we doing on this one? Just going through the motion? Well, there is an agreement to continue her. Oh, okay. Place her on zero tolerance. Then let's go through that motion. Miss okay. Stevens, would you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. So help you God. Thanks. You can put your hand down. So, Ms. Stevens, in cause number 37887, I have a motion to revoke your unadjudicated probation. Shows that you were placed on probation August 29th of 2022 for the offense of aggravated robbery. And that was a 10-year deferred probation. Is that right? Yes. It says here that you violated your probation. Count one alleges that you didn't report like you were supposed to to the Harris County Probation Department. May 23rd and June 29th of 2023. And is that true or not true? true? Count two alleges that you didn't report to the Jefferson County Probation Department October 10th, December 12th of 2022 and August 8th of 2023. And is that true or not true? true. Count three alleges that you didn't report by mail when you were supposed to to the Jefferson County uh, Probation Department February, March, and April of 2023. Is that true or not true? True. Count four alleges that you didn't report your change of address, employment, or marital status or any arrest when you were supposed to. Is that true or not true? True. Count five alleges that you didn't provide verification of performing the community service hours as, re as required. Is that true or not true? true. Count six alleges that you didn't complete the mental health evaluation and follow the recommendations of that. Is that true or not true? true. 
Count seven alleges that you didn't provide verification of participating in an education program for your GED. Is that true or not true? true. Count eight alleges that you failed to provide verification of completing the theft prevention class. Is that true or not true? true. Count nine alleges that you failed to avoid association with your co-defendant, Lanique Malone, and that you were with her around February 6th of 2023. Is that true or not true? true. Count 10 alleges that you are behind in your restitution amount to the victim in the amount of $11,258.47. Is that true or not true? true? Count 11 alleges that you failed to provide verification of entering and successfully completing the MRT program. True or not true? true. Count 12 alleges that you're behind in your court assessed fees. Is that true or not true? true. Enter your pleas of true to counts one through 12, freely and voluntarily. Yes, Judge, if I'm hand, I can, I can sense the hesitation. <laughs> can you read in that motion? And Rel has some recommendations for Jasmine to try okay. to get that restitution paid. And he thinks, and I'll defer to him, that if she's back here in Jefferson County, he can work with her and address all of those different things to get her on the right track. She's in the same position that the young man we had earlier is in and that her co-defendant got 25 years for the aggravated robbery. And she and Lanique Malone have been given this opportunity. And if they're back, I'm going to be asking for the same thing for them. So he, he thought maybe the chance to, well, is yeah. there anything you can have for the court? Uh, just place on a high, medium uh, risk caseload and maybe just have, you know, a more direct, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jefferson County person. So, Jasmine, where will you be living if you if I let you do this? Um, I actually don't have nowhere to stay in Jefferson County. That's why they transferred me to Houston because my mother moved to Houston. Okay. She was standing out here with her spouse. So, yeah, from my conversation, I, when I've asked Jasmine, is there any family out here? And she says all of her family is in Harris County. So when you was in Harris County, you weren't living with your mother at the time you was living there? Mm -mm. I was with my aunt and was who? my aunt that you were speaking with, my aunt. Yes. You were who? My aunt. It was the room and my aunt. I get the feeling that you're not being honest right now. And let me tell you, hang on a second. All right. Because when we started this whole process just a minute ago, raise your right hand, right? To tell the truth. And if you lie right now in this court proceeding, it's a felony, another felony. Well, I'm being honest. When I first got released, I was with the co-defendant. But towards the end, I was not with the co-defendant. So here's the thing. You're not going to be able to leave Jefferson County. If I'm going to go along with this, you got to figure out how to find a place. And I, I know that's difficult and I don't want you to be homeless, but I'm not going to allow you to be under anyone else's supervision under the, other than mine with this man right here, because he's the one saying that he's willing to help you and work with you. And so that's, that's an issue. If you can't find that and do that, then we have a problem. I mean, Mike, because if I do this, it's going to be obviously on the high medium caseload and it's going to be zero tolerance which means one violation gets you back in here with a whole lot of prison time uh, that you probably should have gotten in the beginning. So I don't know. I don't know how to handle that, honestly. Um, Mr. Mr. Burrell, do you want me to maybe reset it just for a short time to see what other op what what options there are for her here that you can look into and talk I with her again? Or can I go, if, if it's Jefferson County, could it be Port of Arthur? Yeah. Yes. I have my aunt in Port of Arthur, 3500 Turtle Creek. Well, what was it first? Why don't we do this? I want you to check on that, uh, if you don't mind, sir, and just make sure that's an appropriate place before I, we all work that out and agree to it. And so let's just reset it for a couple of weeks. That'll give you some time to check into all the options. All right. You can go back with the bailiff. Okay. 
This is cause number 23 DCCR 0298. And ma'am, you're Kimberly Bertrand. Um, and is Miss McGill? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, ma'am? And would you please uh, state your name for the record? Ms. Davis. And Ms. Davis, would you raise your right hand? You swear from the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes. Thank you. And ma'am, you're Kimberly Bertrand. And Ms. Bertrand was placed on probation uh, December 11th of 2023. It was a two-year term that was probated for four years. There was a $500 fine and safety was ordered um, as a condition of probation based on the information received uh, at sentencing and through the uh, pre-sentence report. Mr. LeBlanc has filed a motion asking for reconsideration of the special condition of safety. And I've received a, and I think everybody should have got this morning, um, a memorandum. Um, I obviously have reviewed the pre-sentence report again. Um, I am absolutely not inclined to change my mind on this. Uh, Ms. Bertrand tested positive at her PSI. If that's not someone that needs some inpatient help, I don't know who does. Um, this pre-sentence report for the record shows severe, um, the substance abuse assessment was done. It shows severe alcohol, cannabis, sedative, opioid, and other hallucinogen disorder. This is not something that JCDI or something else. I understand your position. I've read your motion. I know you have a young child. Um, if you want to be there for your young child, then you're going to do this. And hopefully you'll be able to be there for the rest of their life. Um, but I am not. You tested positive for THC, methamphetamine, benzodiazepine, and methadone when you went for your PSI. I mean, there's just... The answer is no, it, then the motion is denied. I mean, you can say what you want. I've read it. I know what your position is, but I'm not going to change my mind. Judge, she's telling me that she's on the Suboxone program, and I don't know if they will. In Jefferson get County, and that they said they too late to take me, so I've been sitting there almost three months, and they're not even going to pull me. Sir, do you know anything about that? The, the nurse told me in the jail that there's a paperwork she said you have all that are Okay. Well, no, I'm going to make sure you're not sitting there. So here's the thing. If you're not eligible to go to safety, I want to know today, Ms. Davis. She was on the list to get transported when I called Mr. Moose on and both my little know that today was a court date, so we had her removed from the transport. Right. So we had to have the hearing. But is, there was no other reason that you know of no, based no, on the know. program that she's on. Just, so, I don't know if that's true or not. It's a boxing program. I mean. I know they don't take people if they've got cases pending. So that yeah, I've never not. heard of that. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. We're going to get you back on the list. And Ms. Davis, if you will double check that there is no other issues holding her. Um, Ms. Bertrand, pay attention here. Uh, that there's no other issues holding uh, based on any program that she's on. This is the program that you're going to go to. All right. And I'm not doing that as a punishment. I'm doing that to hopefully help you and to also protect the community because you were driving, doing all of this stuff. I mean, this, this is just, you're lucky you're here on a state jail felony and not an intox manslaughter or something like that. All right. You can go back with the bailiff. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. And Ms. Davis, if you do find out anything that would hold her, then let me know. Okay. Thank you. Kelly Kochner. He's here, Judge. I apologize, Judge. I was in a jury trial in another court. Oh, which court were you in jury trial in? Yes. I mean, which court? It was in the 186. Oh, okay. You want her in the middle here? Yes. All right, court is calling. Night mag number 740266, State of Texas versus Kelly Cotner. <laughs> Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the state of Texas. Defense. George Sharman on behalf of the defendant. All right, defendant has filed a motion to alter and amend conditions of bond. State, have you had a chance to review the defense's motion? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Our understanding is that they were trying to get her off of uh, her, her full house arrest. Yes. 
All right. And state, do you have any objection to that? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. Defense, do you have any witnesses? Well, um, I'm just, I've got my client here to explain to you that. Um, All right. You want to call her as a witness? On the bond issue alone. Okay. All right. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Kelly Michelle Cotton. All right. Defense? Um, Ms. Codner, um, do you have two ankle monitors on you right now? Yes, sir. Uh, you have, what is it? It's one is a GPS monitor. The other is a scram monitor. On my left ankle is the scram. I mean, excuse me, my right ankle is the scram. All right. Um, now, have you signed an affidavit of non-driving? Yes, sir. And are you, so you don't drive or own a vehicle. That is correct. Um, now, as far as the cost, how much is this costing you every month to do this? 300 for each monitor is 600 a month total. And uh, are you employed? No, I am retired. All right. Do you live on a budget? Oh, absolutely. Um, so are you asking the court to... Uh, relieve you of the um, the monitor for house arrest. Yes, sir. Uh, to save some money. And are you willing to do some other um, monitoring program to have the judge feel safe for the community? Yes, sir. Well, for example, you could also um, have to blow into some device or something like that. Or maybe take uh, urine analysis every now and then, right? Yes, sir. Um, and uh, would you like to have the freedom to come visit your lawyer whenever you wish? Yes, sir. Uh, to shop for food whenever you wish? Yes, sir. And, um, and need uh, to take clothing to the laundry and whatever? Yes, sir. Is that what you're asking the judge to do, to take you off house arrest? Yes, sir. All right. State, any questions? Ms. Connor, were you recently on parole for uh, offense? Yes, it, it expired prior to me being arrested for any new offense. What offense were you on parole for? Uh, DWI. And how many DWI? Well, how many DWI convictions do you have? I believe I have uh, five. Yes. yes. I'm sorry, I can't hear. I believe I have five. Okay. Nothing from the state. All right. Any follow up? No, Judge. I think she's on bond so far. There have been no uh, violations of any kind, and um, she's mm -hmm. presumed innocent here. So mm -hmm. uh, the fact that she has a record shouldn't prevent her from being. Uh, out on bond and to have the ability to do the necessary things that most everybody do. Uh, and judge, just the state was going to offer uh, the defendant's Bear County criminal history and the police report in this case, just for the purposes of this hearing. And I object to that, judge. I don't know that that's relevant. To okay. All right. I don't need to hear that. Thank you. Anything else? That's all. All right. Motion will be denied. All right, thank you. All right, you're Tina Lewis? Yes, ma'am. And so Ms. Lewis is charged in each of her cases with the first degree felony offenses of injury to a child. I feel like we, uh, let me remind myself, we were here on a, an application for writ of habeas corpus, corpus seeking bail reduction. And I had some serious questions about where she was going to be and what was going to happen potentially. And I gave everybody some time to kind of look into options that might have been different than what was presented to me before. And Mr. Matuska, uh, do you have anything different? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Um, I, I Hang on, ma'am. The same witness, Debra Eugene, who has made the arrangements to remove the children. She's here to testify to that. Although it's the same location, the residence, the issue last time was that somebody had moved in with the child. Right. So she's here to testify. Okay, she can come up. Oh. 
Try to find another way. I'm gonna find a way. Oh, Good morning, ma'am. Um, can you state your name for the record again, please? My name is Deborah. Mm -hmm. And Miss Eugene. Mr. Eugene, would you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead, Mr. Matuska. Good morning, Mr. Eugene. Um, last time we were here, you recall you discussed uh, having a child potentially in the home or, or had a child recently moving to your home. Yes. Now, but has I, that hang on? Has that living arrangement changed in any way? Yeah, it didn't change. How so? That's my daughter thing. My granddaughter, she was, was standing for a little while, but she had moved out. She wanted to come home. Okay, so if I recall, no babies, no babies are there. No. So if I recall, it would be you, your husband, yeah. your disabled son, and Tina, Tina and that's it. that's it. Um, so Tina's daughter was there with her two babies, correct? Yeah. And they have since moved out. Yeah, they moved out. Okay. Any questions of this witness? All right. Thank you, ma'am, for clarifying that. And I want to see her. Yes, ma'am. She have a tube top. It cut. She uh, had a tube day. She went over there. Okay. So she ain't going to have any babies. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, she's pretty. <coughs> Yes, ma'am. You're on so bad. Okay. Ms. Malfino. If we take a, take Ms. Eugene's word for that, Judge, I think that alleviates one of the problems, the concerns that I know that the court was really having. My position in sitting in for Ms. Lesniak is that we're not opposed to relief, Judge, from the $750,000 bond. Uh, I certainly believe that that amount is just very high, but I would also ask the court to please impose a bond amount that is suitable for the offense in this case. It's just, the facts are just horrendous. Um, the reason, you know, I, the state's position all along has been that they really want to go forward on, on one of the co-defendants first. And with that representation, I feel like it's really only fair if there can be appropriate conditions met to reduce Miss Lewis's bonds while we wait on that other case to go to trial, which could be some amount of time. Do you need a minute? Do we need a minute? Maybe. Okay, Sorry, let me just yeah. hold this. Go have a seat in the jury box. And um, Ms. Malfino, Ms. Lewis, recall 22-40200 and 22-40201. Is there... Judge, Malfino? thank you for the minute. Um, I was able to speak with Ms. Zlesniak uh, very briefly by text. She couldn't answer due to the conference she's in. It is her uh, position to try Jalen Lewis first. She, st she stands on that. I think maybe where we have a little bit of confusion, there is that new evidence that we addressed with Mr. Burbank, the phone dump that also goes to Mr. Matuska. I think with that evidence, Ms. Lesniak might have changed her position on a few things or seen some different information that has changed her position with respect to working with three co-defendants at the same time. She asked me to just uh, ask the court to consider relief, but to also consider the nature of the first degree felony, the heinousness of the crime, et cetera, and make sure that, uh, and she knows you will, 
if she is released on bond safeguard uh, other children from this list. All right, so here's what I'm going to do in each case. I'm going to grant some relief. I'm going to uh, reduce the bonds in each cases, in each of the cases to $100,000 conditions of that bond in each case if they are met um, if you make the bond is that miss um, Lewis you would be required to live uh, with your mother um, do we have that address again I had I, okay. okay I just said 100 right 100 I have uh, 1400 Joe Lewis uh, Avenue, 2001, and that poor other zip is 640. All right, so the requirements if you make that bond in each case, Ms. Lewis, is that you will be on house arrest. What that means is you are not allowed to leave 1400 Joe Lewis Boulevard, number 2001, for any purpose other than meeting with your attorney or coming to court. If there's any other issues with regard to doctors or anything like that, you have to get with Mr. Matuska. He has to get with the court and I have to give you permission. You will be required to wear a GPS monitoring device at all times, pay the cost of that. Um, that way we know that you are where you're supposed to be. In addition, there are to be absolutely no children present at that house. I'm not talking about supervised or unsupervised, just none, okay? It's that simple. Um, if that's an issue, then I find out that people are coming over to visit with children or grandchildren or things like that. Your bond's immediately going to go back up, and we're not going to talk about this again, okay? Yes, Anything else that you can think of? No. All right, and then we will reset the case. You can go back with the bailiff. MC Reed. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? She's making it. Oh, know. okay. All right. We have jury trial today. Yes, Judge. Uh, according to my client, he is spot. I didn't get notice, but he filed a motion to terminate me as counsel. He doesn't want me as his attorney anymore. Uh, there has been a, a breakdown in a parent client relationship, so I will request a withdrawal as well, but all right, so Mr. Reed, yes, let me explain something to yes, you. As you know, I've been a defense attorney. I've been a prosecutor. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes the breakdown in communication is, guess what? My attorney came back to me with this offer. I think this offer is ridiculous. And that's the breakdown in communication. But what I can tell you in this court, yes, I require that the state tender an offer to the defense. You can think that offer is ridiculous. I always tell people, I like for people to be kind to each other. So you can think it's ridiculous. Just don't say it's ridiculous. Or of course, if you want to say it ridiculous, you're more than welcome to do that. But I always find that when people use extreme words, then it truly puts people with their back against the wall. So the way it works is the state tenders an offer to your counsel. Your counsel will tender that offer to you. You can accept it or you can reject it. You can reject it and say in your mind, this offer is ridiculous. I'll only accept A, right? Then you know what will end up happening? That's called a counter offer. And your attorney will go back to the state and say, my client is unwilling to accept the offer you've tendered to me, but he's saying he'll, he's willing to accept offer A. And then at that time, excuse me, Mr. Bravinick, we're talking here. Okay. All right, thank you. Sure. So then at that time, the state will tell you, eh, I will give him what he's asking for, or either the state will, will reject your counter offer and say, no, I'm not going to give him that. And then at that point, guess what? It's jury trial. So that's where you are. This is your attorney who is going to be trying the case. You understand? All right. So if you want to enter an agreement, you're more than welcome to do so. Otherwise, the jury is coming up here at 11. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys for sticking with me on this. I was shooting for six o'clock Pacific time. 
but I realized I'm just not going to make it because there were just too many little clips to put together and edit and it wasn't going as fast as I thought. But I'm going to try to get one out every evening at 6 or 6 out of 7 nights anyway at 6 o'clock Pacific time because I really enjoy chatting with you guys and I really love hearing what you have to say. It's like a gift to me, so thank you so very much. I'm also gonna try to set up memberships. They'll be cheap, they'll be like less than two bucks, and please don't feel obligated. None of you guys are obligated to do that. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.